So continuing from the previous video, we now want to adjust our settings so that this will render a stereo cube map, which you can view using the Gear VR headset. So let's go back to our camera shape here, and we want to set the panoramic type in the panoramic camera settings to cube map. You can see now it's going to render out as a cube map. And then the next thing we want to do after that is we want to adjust the stereoscopic settings so that it's actually rendering in 3D. So that when we view the image in the Gear VR headset, there is parallax. So to do that, we'll go down to the stereo output settings and let's set this to side by side. So the image doesn't look like much because of course it's kind of squished to fit into this uh, image resolution. So the next thing we'll need to do is adjust the image resolution. So let's close this for a second here go into the render settings and the gear VR has a specific resolution that we want to use other VR headsets will have different resolutions so you want to make sure you check the documentation for the headset that you're using but for the gear VR what we want to do is we want to set the width to 18 for 32 18,432 pixels and the height 1536 so this would be very wide but short render short in terms of size not necessarily in terms of the length of time it's going to take so now let's take a look at uh, the or preview of the render and what i'm going to do is i'm going to choose render test resolution let's set this to 50 percent, just so it's not too huge and then we'll go into the render view window and let's turn off gamma correction and choose render snapshot camera one be very long skinny render and I'll hit IPR and you can see this is what the render looks like so it's a series of square images one for each eye so we have these right here these six images on this side and these six images on this side and this will be mapped to a cube that you can see within the gear VR headset so you can either do a batch render or let it render here in the render preview window. Typically when you save the image, you'll want to save it as a PNG format image. So we can set this to PNG. We'll call it bar year PR. And of course I'm rendering this at half resolution. So probably for the final, I would want to make sure that I'm doing the test resolution at 100%. The final step, of course, is to get this image onto the Gear VR headset where you can view it. And for instructions on how to do this, I'm going to refer you to the documentation on otoy.com. So you want to go to otoy.com support documentation and go to the Octane Render Standalone Edition documentation. And then down to the appendix, Advanced Topics. uploading images to the Samsung Gear VR headset. And you'll find the instructions right here, plus some fast facts. So overall, the process is pretty easy to follow. And depending on the scene, with the tune shading, of course, it's nice and fast to render. Some other scenes are gonna take a while to render in order to eliminate noise. Um, one thing you might wanna consider doing is that after you've set up your scene in uh, Octane for Maya, you might want to export as an Orbix and actually do the final stage of rendering in Octane Standalone, which tends to be a little bit faster than Octane for Maya and also gives you access to tools such as the AI Denoiser that have not been released for Octane for Maya just yet. So just a little suggestion there.